Hello everybody, this is Bud, this is take 3 of the distro tumbling Kubuntu edition video here. I will distro hope that is what this video is about. Uh, but as I just mentioned, this is take 3. The first um, version of this video uh, got uh, abruptly um, borked out because I discovered while recording that uh, an issue. I discovered it by, by accident in, in the new version of i3. Didn't mean to do that, I actually already have the tab here. So apparently uh, this tiling drag feature, I guess if we open a terminal here, then we can do this and maybe this. Okay, why doesn't that? Ah, there. I, I've been using so many different uh, <laughs> i3 versions and stuff here now, so I'm starting to forget my own custom key bindings. But you know, the tiling, drag feature that lets you drag uh, a tiled window uh, by holding the modifier that feature actually triggers even on full screen windows i realized that when i was uh, in a virtual machine session so if i open sublime here in full screen hold the modifier you see it starts tile dragging here and it's all weird also uh, and I also noticed that if you actually drop uh, the full screen window here in this mode, it, it can crash i3 also. So it's kind of a serious, uh, important thing that I hope they will fix here. I think it's a one line thing, uh, just test for is the current window full screen, don't drag. It, it should be super easy to fix this. Um, so that was what cancelled um, my my first attempt. My second attempt just did that just just a minute ago. It got it was quite long. I actually recorded one hour and fifteen minutes. I, so now I will I know what will get dragged out. I will try to speed this up quite a bit here now. But uh, I was still happy with it. I was like, yeah, this is my I think I will upload this anyways. But then I realized that I accidentally muted the microphone after like twenty minutes. So unusable. Uh, so now here we are in take three, but it will be good. It will be good. Should also mention quickly here, well, since we are on the i3 issue tracker here, there have been quite a few reports here uh, about the new tiling drag feature. I knew it would never go super smooth, uh, but it's in my opinion, n nothing is a big deal and easy. And some of them are just annoyances. Some people are simply just not used to it. You know, <laughs> cranky, cranky old men like myself who don't like any type of change whatsoever. Um, but uh, I, I actually kind of uh, agree to one one thing. Is that uh, before this uh, feature, you could uh, click on a title bar and drag it to resize it. And you say, but but uh, you are doing that on this version. Yeah, you can still do it if you use the right mouse button. But on the older versions, you could do it with the left mouse button. But now when you do that, you start uh, tile drag. And also, by the way, if you start tile dragging like this, you can press escape and that will simply cancel it. It can be really good <laughs> to know that. Um, and I do that all, all the time. I, I was actually, I didn't even know about it, but I, I, I just had the habit of, of using the left button on the title bars and dragging. I, and I, I, I do it constantly now on this new version. I start, even if I know it, I, I don't know. I will probably learn it after I'm getting better and starting to use the right mouse uh, button, which was also, uh, you could use it before as well. So it just... In one way, it kind of didn't make sense that they had the same action for both mouse buttons before, because now they got this scenario here. So I'm one of those who actually find that a bit annoying that uh, this changes that behavior that I was actually quite used to. Um, but some have uh, reported that they are annoyed by just, they, they, they start the tile drag, not because they want to resize, but uh, some people just uh, noticed that they, they had a tendency of, of clicking a title and then just not letting go of the button for no, no good reason. There, there's like no no reason for it, but we all have these weird habits. Maybe you do this, you know, and, and you start and then what's going on here now? Um, so, so what it boils down to is uh, that maybe this should be more configurable. Uh, 
right now you cannot configure tile drag at all you cannot enable or disable it it's like enable both with the modifier key so holding the floating modifier and you can start to drag from anywhere on the window or you can left click the title bar um, but maybe it should be a bit more configurable so you could disable it completely at least and in my opinion you should also be able to specify uh, if you want to enable uh, left clicking or the modifier or both that is my vote at least and I participated in one of these thread uh, saying my, my ideas about it and then I actually got an ID here I made a, a feature request as well see I don't think anything will happen with it really but uh, maybe add a new option to the config title click so you can really fine-tune what the different mouse buttons do when you click and then it would be really cool if you could also add like a double option so you could double click on, on the title bar and make it floating or tiled by doing that it wouldn't be a big deal I believe to implement this um, and that would kind of th then you could really get exactly what you want but whatever you could read this issue or this feature request I submit submitted here if you want to see my ideas about that I, I think it's a good idea but I, I'm sure that they will completely dismiss this uh, but hopefully they will make it so that we can fine-tune the options a bit for it all in all I still still believe that it was a su su very successful implementation of such an advanced feature uh, and I really hope that, that uh, Orestes and the other developers doesn't get burned out now by, by all by the issues. It isn't that many and it isn't that complicated things really. Uh, so I, I just want to make that clear. I think it's a great release and a great feature and very well implemented. But it, there have been some, some issues reported here. All right, let's get back to the distro hopping Ubuntu edition. So what's, what's this about? As we all know here, I am using OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is uh, OpenSUSE's rolling release distribution. Not sure how many other rolling release distributions there really is out there. You know, Arch is the main one, and then Tumbleweed. And then, of course, you have one million Arch uh, derivatives like Manjaro and those guys. I count all of them as Arch, and I don't want to be an Arch user, so to me it feels like tumbleweed is like the only other rolling release distribution and then of course you have void i know that void is is uh, also rolling release but void is without system d and i can i i want sorry but i do i do want system d uh, yeah but you can enable system d in void yeah but then i have to set up everything there myself i don't want to do that either <laughs> so uh to me it felt like at the time the tumbleweed was like the obvious choice uh, to, to try out I, I didn't have any experience at all with SUSE I was ju also just curious how SUSE worked and what was different with it and, and stuff like that uh, now I've been using SUSE for about two months uh, or I think six weeks so maybe it's not some people might say you should give it like six weeks more but uh, there, there have been a couple of things here recently now that, that have led me to make the decision to uh, hop to Ubuntu actually and Kubuntu and maybe even a rolling version of Ubuntu. Uh, but I think I will start by explaining what I am not so happy about with SUSE. It feels a bit weird to do that. I, I kind of don't want to trash talk anyone so to speak or and I also really want to highlight that I think SUSE is a great distribution and I really mean this I have never my computer has never been working as well as it does while running Linux as it have been now with SUSE tumbleweed like the operation of the computer it's it's just better it's like it's better configured the hardware has the correct drivers and they are configured correctly they ie they are not configured by me uh, which they were on arch uh, or they were not configured at all because i didn't even know i needed to configure stuff you know lots of things are taken care of by distributions like uh, SUSE, for example and it have never been better but there have there are things 
that um, have, have really been annoying as well. Um, and that is what I will explain here now. Um, let's do this. Open SUSE Tumbleweed. Just search for it on a search engine to get to the like landing page for Tumbleweed here. And I think they, they just changed this page like yesterday or something because there used to be a link here on this page I'm sure that said like learn more click here and when you did so you it you were taken to the wiki page here uh, because this is more <laughs> marketing fluff uh, doesn't really say that much uh, that I'm interested in yes if you click here you can get some more useful links and stuff here I know that fine but this is like the official SUSE wiki, opensuse.org wiki page here. Um, and this is the portal, whatever that means, Tumbleweed. So this is the Tumbleweed wiki page, main page. And I, I actually went here um, because I, I was confused about something. And that something is the package updates. So let's make this. Let's make this tab there. Um, I don't know where I got it from, uh, but when you want to update SUSE, I, I, I was using this for until like a week ago. sudo super refresh, that will like download new uh, repository cache so all the repositories are up to date so the package manager knows which packages are needed to update and then this command simply updates those packages so th there are equivalents to, the, to this command in, in uh, on arch and, and debian and probably all distributions it needs to do this like it needs to to get the information about which uh, uh, packages to update okay not a big deal you execute this command Let's see, it's probably super fast now because I just did this. So, so it have the uh, package cache here. See, these are just, it's up to date, don't worry. We will, it, it means it, it doesn't even download new cache there. And there's nothing to do because I just did an update. But this, these lines here, when it gets this, uh, this repository cache, is uh, quite slow. Or I would even go as far as to say it's very slow. It takes a long time to download the repository cache. And you can also see I have, there are quite a few of these repositories. I've tried not to add too many additional repositories, but it is very easy to do so. And I will show you how easy it is. It is too easy to do it in my opinion. Um, but each of these repositories takes about, sometimes they can take like 10 seconds each to just get the cache from the repositories. It feels very slow um, and then the update installing downloading or downloading is fast but then uh, installing and uh, extracting and that stuff is uh, uh, quite a lot slower than on arch that I don't really care so much about. That is okay. I, I, I knew that I would probably not get as fast updates like that, uh, that this wouldn't be as fast as, as uh, Pac-Man. And that is, I, I think it is also, I, I can li live with that part being slow, but this part being so slow, this is actually much slower than actually installing the actual packages. It's slower to get just the cache from the repositories. <coughs> that is very annoying. Um, uh, uh, uh. But also when you do this command here, which I just did, which I thought was the way you do do things here on SUSE, you also sometimes get a warning, uh, distribution update needed, uh, run sudo super dup. And I was like, I, I simply ignore that because it seemed like everything worked and I, I got the correct updates and everything every time I did this. It, I never had any issues, but then one day I, I was like, yeah, maybe I should execute that command since it tells me I shouldn't. So, so I did that sudo super dup, which I have no idea what it really means. I think it's distribution update or something. Yeah, nothing to do there either because I more or less 
just did it. Um, but when I did this the first time, then it, I got all kinds of warnings saying that, hey, do you want me to move uh, this XFCE panel 4.17.3? Let's remove that and install 4.16.1. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And uh, warnings like that I got and, and uh, weird options for me to, to choose from and none of them <laughs> seemed like a good idea. So I can't, uh, simply aborted that and, and started looking into this. What, what is this about? Should I even do this su super up or dup? Now I actually use that, uh, but I'm still not 100% sure here. And that led me to this page here. And there is actually a section in the page. Uh, to keep Tumbleweed up updated to the la latest snapshot using SIPA, run the following command as root, SIPA dup. Now I was like, okay, so I guess if it's here on this official wiki, this is what I do. And I, I simply started using it. But I, Every time I got those messages about repositories or changing packages and, and conflicts and stuff, I never got, got it with super up and, and, and that. But you see, there is also a link here, uh, a discussion about using super dup versus super up, a recent discussion. <clears throat> so great, then I can finally figure out which one to use, right? This recent discussion was started on 28th uh, December 2016 and here it's just the first post in this thread but we can see the full thread here where the first post is on 28th December 2016 and the last post there are lots of posts the last post is posted on yes 29th December of 2016. So all of these are from one single day. This must have been a, like a massive debate here. And what is the debate about? If you should use super dup or super up <laughs> and what the differences are. And I read this and I got even more confused to be honest. I'm st I still don't really know which one is best exactly what they and they also all, all all these guys seem very emotional about this, like it's very bad to use one or the other depending on who you are here. I, I still don't know. I find this quite... Uh, this was really what broke the camel's back, was this thread to be honest. that uh, And that, that this is what is posted here on the official wiki. This is... okay, this is exactly what I wanted, you know. This is not how the Arch wiki works. Then it would be like a two-line paragraph telling you you should use uh, Pacman SYU to update or YYU to always get fresh uh, uh, cash, but try not to use that too many times. That is basically what Arch wiki says. Here you get this. But you also have this super dup uh, priorities page, which is slightly better. That is from the forum so they have this mailing list with a lot of activity in apparently but they also have this forum uh, not so much activity i think um, this thread from may 2018 so it's also like more than four years old already um, so that also e even if it is correct the information here it is still old you you never know as a user if it's still valid and it kind of should be valid when it is rolling release and stuff like that but um, I much rather and of course everyone likes the arch wiki of course but at least uh, not this in, in a way but I read this thread and, and it's a good thread it explains more about what was going on there when it was moving the packages around so we'll open uh, the super or the GUI for the package manager here, which is also slow. And every time you start the GUI, it will also refresh those cache. But it is fast now so, since it know it have like bleed just done this, so it doesn't do it. But usually that takes like 10, 15 seconds before I get to this screen here, because it needs to download those cache uh, things. And then if you go to configuration repositories now i have tried to configure this i'm still not sure if this is a good configuration uh, one thing i did the first day but i had to i figured it out myself that this is a repository that is enabled by default and this repository you can see the address here it's like a device this is actually the the usb device that i uh, from where i installed the distribution uh, 
the repositories on that USB device, which I guess I should unplug it from my computer. I still haven't done that. So maybe, maybe it gets automatically removed when you do that. But, you know, I, I still haven't done it. And I think I'm not the only one who just, whatever. Um, if you don't disable this, it will also, when it downloads the cache, it will also scan this for the cache. And depending on uh, your USB, that can be very slow. My USB appears to be extremely slow. So this made it take like four times as long until I disabled this. Then it was like two minutes before it had scanned all the repositories. But disabling this, then that was, yeah, saved me like uh, 90 seconds. Uh, but all repositories are added here with the 99 priority, Wayne Gretzky. <clears throat> and 99, that means nothing. It's just a number, obviously. <laughs> but this is actually the priority that the, the um, repository has. But by default, it adds the same priority to all repositories. Uh, but you can change the priority here. As you can see, I have changed it on these three. If it has a lower priority number, it has higher priority, obviously. So this has the highest priority of the repositories I have. But before I changed this priority, it had the same priority as the others. And that was why it specifically messed up with the XFCE packages. Because this repository I have here is... Uh, I actually like this a lot, this repository. So, so it might... This video is a bit weird. I like things, I don't like them at the same time. You will see. Uh, this repository is kind of intended for uh, the OpenSUSE uh, developers who maintain the, the XFCE flavor or branch uh, and it it provides like bleeding edge versions of the xfce uh, applications if i open about for the panel here we can see i have 4.17.3 git so this is really the master branch of the xfce panel uh, git repository that is what you get here with this rat xfce colon rat repository you get the git version basically but they are pre-packaged and pre-compiled. So you actually get those um, programs faster than you can get them on Arch. Because even you can get them on AUR. But then you still need to compile them. Or AUR, your AUR helper will compile it. And the package build will compile it for you and stuff like that. It is automatic but you still need to do it. It's, it actually takes some time. And the, the XFCE applications... Also, kind of, they, they get updated like every day, almost these Git branches. <clears throat> so that is really nice that that is available here for those who want that. And I, I want that. I Of course, I cannot recommend that you use like the bleeding edge Git branch of, of this. They, they can include bugs and sometimes they actually do. But that is exactly what I want because I report those bugs. I, I have actually reported and gotten some things fixed. I have even fixed some things myself and gotten them merged here in the in the, for example the panel repository so for me i also want this and it's perfect that that is available here uh, i found this repository uh, like this did i lose that now okay open can i search for it here maybe oh don't worry about my <laughs> what i have searched for uh, open build service What is this? This? Here it is. OBS. This is, it, it's not obvious at all that it is that, but this is kind of like AUR in a way, in a way. Man, I wish, wish I could get rid of this autocomplete GTK box. I don't know where this comes from. It's not like Vivaldi, it's some GTK built-in memory for this. Sometimes it have really annoying <laughs> entries in that list, but this is fine, I guess. Whatever, uh, get back uh, on track. XFCE. We search for XFCE here. Let's XFCE for panel, I guess. So you can search for packages here, and then you get a list. It's not obvious at all that this is <laughs> that you can search for packages there, but you can. And here you see uh, the different repositories where this pa uh, package is available. Quite a lot of repositories, right? These are like PP, very many repositories, it appears. 
These are like PPAs on Debian. So you can add like extra repositories and install packages from there. Arch XFCE Git. I'm, I'm not even sure. And these ones that are prefixed with home, I guess they are like more normal users here using this uh, 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 service. But I found this XFCE rat when I was just clicking around the first days here and I was uh, impressed by it. Like here they explain that this is like the upstream XFCE git master branch meant for development, yada yada. Um, and um, you can just, uh, let's see, yeah, it lists, lists here the different uh, uh, applications. And to install one of these applications here from this unofficial semi-official repository in this case you simply just go here download package open SUSE tumbleweed and you get some kind of a ymp file you can just open that file yeah whatever save it there that's fine and then you get this GUI first I thought this was excellent you know man this is exactly like you down you install a program on Windows you just go to some home page Download install.exe, get some spyware, click some boxes, just next, yeah, 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 next, next, thank you, thank you, yeah, do, do, <laughs> yeah, of course, I have read the instructions here, just like Windows, you know, just like good, good old, uh, now I forgot my password, there it is, you get a GUI, it's very much like Windows, and now I already had the X11 XFCE RAT repository that is enabled. But if I wouldn't have that, it would here now automatically enable that repository. Give it the same, that 99 priority and stuff like that. And install this new package. Like a one click, just like Windows. It will actually work out now. I, I, I know why. Uh, it's also usually quite slow to install packages like this. Now it is extra slow because it is there is an error in this whole process. I know what it is. I will explain it. Maybe I should have turned make it work here so we could see how slow fast it actually is. But this is usually quite slow even when it's working. When it's not working, it's super slow and then you get this error. Try to figure out what this means. No clue, right? Okay. And then I get some error here. Root privileges are required, not supplied, but I know I typed the correct password. What the actual error was, and there must be a way to actually print that correctly. The actual problem is that I have the GUI open here. The package manager GUI is open. If I would close this, I guess I can do it. I guess I couldn't. I guess I can do it. It's also kind of slow even to stop it. Um, we do it again. Now it will work. That was the issue, but that was not included in any warning. How hard could it be to just say that, hey, you cannot, you, you need to close the, the GUI YAST software manager first. Yes, my password is password one, two, three. Now you see, okay, now, yes, this is, and of course, don't do this, just don't do what, what I'm doing in this video, randomly installing some package here. The thing is, I don't care, I will install uh, Ubuntu today on this machine, I will uh, remove SUSE today anyways, I don't, I, I don't care. I think I already have this EXO installed, that's the thing, I think this is already installed because it's one of the dependencies for the uh, XFCE packages. So even if it's an easy process, I wouldn't say that it's really fast and could not be installed. Installation was only partially successful. The thing is, I think it was the, the, the problem now, also no information about that. So it's helpful, but it's also not helpful at the same time. And it's actually quite harmful in my opinion, because now it have also added a new repository there. And now we selected this X11 XFCE rat, kind of a official, in quotation mark, uh, extra repository, but it could just as well, I could just as well have selected something from one of these home directories. 
repositories uh, and they can include all kinds of extra things and then those could get higher priority as you can see they are sometimes very recently updated that means that uh, the package manager will choose packages from those repositories instead and they can be like completely custom builds and stuff and and i know the crit you could criticize me and say, yeah, but that's your fault that you didn't set up things correctly. Well, it's not super obviously. Now I kind of know that you need to set up those priorities and stuff like that, but it's very easy. And this is also what everyone is saying. Yeah, you know, Arch, very, very difficult, but Suse, that's great for beginners. You get a good GUI to it. I, I think this is much more confusing and easy to get things messed up with, with these... Uh, uh, automatic GUI uh, uh, dialogues and it's never really clear what is going on there but if you set this up uh, with the repository priorities you will not hopefully not get those uh, uh, problems but I'm, I'm to be honest I'm still not 100% sure I'm doing this correctly at all I guess also another another argument would be yeah but you should not yeah it's your fault if you're using unofficial repositories. Uh, so if you cannot expect things to work perfectly then. You cannot criticize, well, this is provided by SUS uh, officially this. I consider this like part of, of the experience, so to speak, whatever. Uh, and I think it worked a lot better with Arch and Arch has the difference that Arch is doing is that they are really saying that AUR is an unofficial repository. It's the user repositories, we have nothing to do with it and use it on your own risk and then everything is centralized. Meaning that when you search for XFCE panel on AUR, you will find a couple of different forks but you will not find even a fraction of, of the number that we found here on, on SUSE because there, why would everyone create a, a, a new repository for every single package when, when, when you have a central uh, central location here and many of these now panel was a bad example because yeah but it's still only 21 packages and, and here most of these are actually plugins for the panel what is this? XFCE panel i3 plugins maintained by Budrich. What is that? <laughs> For a different day, different video. Anyways, I, I don't like this package management experience and what distributions really boils down to in one way is the package management, to be honest, really. But it's also other things and those other things they work great on SUSE as I mentioned computer works fine but I want I, I actually think so and I think this is also some people want that some people want that you know some and that is those who are attracted to arch uh, they, they they know that they know that they need to set everything up themselves they will probably mess some things up some things will get worse but they have it's their own fault, so to speak. Here, it is the other way around. Everything is configured and it's not my fault and I don't I don't have an idea how to fix it, so to speak. But also, a lot of things are correctly configured. But I also get a worse package manager experience. And if I have to choose between good package management, bad configuration, in quotation mark bad, it's my up to me <laughs> configuration, or bad package management which SUSE isn't really bad I shouldn't say it's bad but it's much worse in my opinion than Arch is and of course I am biased because I have been using Arch for like seven years I've used SUSE for seven weeks so so uh, of course that take that into account what I'm saying here but for me this is my experience if I have to choose between worse package management which i think it is objectively is anyways here <laughs> and perfectly good uh, configuration of the system i would choose bad configs good package management management um, and that, that's where we are different some people would choose the other thing and, and that is understandable and there are like reasons for both of them and we are not enemies we are still on, on, on the same team in a way you know whatever 
but these were annoyances I had with Suze and have been experienced since day one, basically the slowness and stuff. And I've, I've just been a bit annoyed and, and kept my eye open for maybe, maybe an alternative. Uh, then on one of the recent videos I made, I, I got some comments from uh, another YouTuber here. So a shout out to Lanius, who has his own uh, Linux uh, chan YouTube channel. And uh, I checked in on it a bit and uh, saw that he had made this video about uh, daily driving Ubuntu rolling Rhino remix. And when I saw it, just saw the thumbnail and the title here, I was like, yeah, that's a thing. I remember that uh, they were talking about the, there is a way to, to make Ubuntu rolling. And I remember when I heard about it the first time, I was like, yeah, that's what, what we, why, why not just use Arch then? Or why not? That, that's, that sounds stupid. <laughs> But I watched this a bit and I also uh, looked into this Rolling Rhino Remix, um, what that was. And I guess we can do it here from the description. Rolling Rhino Remix is a new distribution, uh, which is of course uh, Ubuntu uh, spin, respin of Ubuntu, enabling this uh, rolling feature. Uh, but I heard about this uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, when it was originally conceived, the idea of making it rolling. And that was on the Ubuntu podcast, which I used to listen to. I listened to every every episode of that uh, since I started using Linux, basically. And I, I always thought it was the best Linux podcast. And it's uh, really sad that, they, uh, that it is now uh, closed. Uh, they stopped producing shows, I don't remember, maybe a year or, or something ago. But here in 2020, season 13, episode 12 and uh, episode 14, they started discussing how one would go about to create uh, or to turn Ubuntu into a rolling release distribution. And they kind of came up with how to do it on this podcast. Uh, it, it's quite cool. Uh, and it also works. And one of the hosts of the podcast uh, is Martin Wimpress, who used to be an Arch package maintainer, later became an uh, employee of Canonical. I think he, I don't know, I don't think he's the head of the desktop team now, but I think he was. And he was, I think he was at uh, Canonical for, for quite some time. I'm not sure if he's there, there still. He's also the, the maintainer of Mate desktop environment and created that so so he, he is a very productive and generous um, with he, he creates a lot of stuff for the Linux community as a whole he also has a YouTube channel uh, or I guess a twitch and he sometimes published that stuff to YouTube so you can see this how he when he creates the rolling Rhino script here basically taking those IDs from the podcast and turning it into a bash script. And this is still maintained. This is uh, updated not that long ago, if I'm not mistaken here, 10 days ago. Uh, so it's still maintained and it's just, it's, it's actually, it's so simple to do this really. Uh, so you just need a uh, bash script and do, execute that bash script once. And then you ha actually have a rolling version of Ubuntu. What it boils down to is that you need to install one of these daily builds, which apparently exists. They are a bit secret on, on the Ubuntu release page, but you, you can actually get to this, these pages by clicking around on, on the Ubuntu release page. Um, and the daily builds are, yeah, as they say, daily builds. They are released every, every day. A new daily build is released. So already there, you, you could get a rolling rolling experience by downloading a new daily build every day <laughs> because they do have the latest bleeding edge updates it's like more beta than uh, the beta builds which is also available for ubuntu ubuntu really likes releases there are like 1 billion different types of releases and flavors and stuff like this uh, but you download one of these daily builds and then you execute the rolling rhino script here and what that does is it will enable the devel repositories instead of using the, the normal official repositories, you will use uh, the devel series. And, that, and those are continuously updated with new pack, uh, pack, package updates and stuff like that. And they are intended for those who work on, on the next versions of Ubuntu. 
but you can actually do this yourself but of course then you are completely out of support for of Ubuntu and you also um, uh, uh, you, you are supposed to, to also actively participate in any issue resolution and problems you find should report them to launchpad that you are obliged to do that but of course if you don't do it it's not like someone comes knocking on your door if you understand what I mean uh, and there are, of course, drawbacks. You can get unstable software. Sometimes it can even be security issues, but it's basically the same issues that you would have on Arch, for example, when you use a roll or, or SUSE Tumbleweed, I guess. And it is also not really a rolling distribution. They are, it, it is not Arch anyways, you know, you don't get, it's not like they are uh, publishing as many updates and stuff as, as you get on Tumbleweed or Arch, but you, you will get much more updates uh, and you don't need to do the 22, 10, 4 uh, updates. You, you will just automatically continue to roll, so to speak. Um, so it is very much possible to do it, but it's also possible to do it with this new uh, distribution here. Rolling Rhino Remix basically takes that script and, and uh, those daily build stuff there and turns it into its uh, 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 a, a distribution basically. And I tried this, but I had uh, several uh, annoying issues with it. Uh, I don't want to get into that and I don't want to bash on this project. It's a small project with they are just a couple of guys working on this and, and they seem to do a, a great job here and I think this can become a, a, a really good thing. But to me, it, it I had issues with, with like Paxtol, I had issues with Nala being very slow I felt and, and these built-in commands here also. Actually, it, it needs some polish, uh, let's, let's, let's say that. Uh, and I, I, I do wish them all, all luck here with this project. There is potential. But you can also just follow the guide on, on Wimpy's World here and uh, do it the official way, downloading a, a daily build manually and just executing this script. And then you also have the rolling uh, uh, distribution. Um, but this, uh, even if I would do this, if I would jump to Ubuntu, I would have the exact same issues as I just described here on SUSE because Ubuntu have the same um, design with PPAs. It's very easy to start adding these unofficial repositories to, to your list of uh, repositories and, it, uh, and you get the exact same uh, issues and problems as, as I described here on, on SUSE. Uh, but uh, Wimpy has also this uh, utility here, which is rather interesting in my opinion. Uh, Debget. So Debget is a way to, to download and install third-party deb builds because debs are .deb files that is the Debian and Ubuntu package format so if you have a deb file just as you can you can do this with Arch as well you can download like a, a, a archived package and just install it with Pacman without going through the uh, repositories and you can probably do this with SUSE as well, I just don't know how to do it and I'm not sure if there is a tool like this. Maybe there is and you can fix the issues like that, but here is this. So this devget, it have a curated list of available uh, packages. You can see it's, it's not super long, it's not super short. It have some, some of these I, I actually like, for example Sublime and Vivaldi. And this means that it will use the official Sublime text custom Linux repositories. So you will get the latest release of Sublime without going through Ubuntu or anything and I don't think Sublime is even available in the Ubuntu or Debian repositories for example. And also Vivaldi is available here and like VS Code and there are some other like uh, 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 proprietary programs here that you might want to use or maybe not but there is also it doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to be um, proprietary software either, like Nala here, for example, that's an alternative package manager to, to front-end for apt, command line front-end for, for the apt package manager. Uh, but you can use this, so, so you might wonder why, why would you do this? But this is kind of, instead of uh, 
enabling a PPA. Now you use this tool instead to grab those uh, packages directly. And many of these packages, as you can see, has a GitHub link here. Because this is starting to become more and more... No, I'm not sure. That doesn't look like... GitHub, okay, it linked to their web page, source code. I just took a random one there. This is the min browser. If we look at their release page here. We should probably see that it provides dev files already and also RPM files. That is the uh, Fedora package uh, format and or Red Hat, I guess. So you can download these uh, dev files directly from GitHub and install them with the package manager without using PPAs, without using repositories. Um, so, so that's why devget is, uh, is great, because then you don't need to add any PPAs and it even supports packages that might not even be in a PPA. They are available on, on GitHub. And in my opinion, when they are provided by the developers of the application themselves, like here, it's the min browser project to publish and create these devs. They are, in my opinion, more trusted to me uh, than some, some guy in quotation marks, uh, uh, PPA custom repository. Um, and it also never, it doesn't bloat your configuration if you don't add any PPAs and use this instead. Your normal updates and upgrades will be much faster and cleaner and you don't get any mishmash uh, trying to install some packages from, from the wrong repository and stuff like that. This is a great uh, um, a tool. And it's, I think it's also Bash, by the way, because uh, Wimpy really likes Bash. So. But this is, might be a bit more complex here. I think it also includes the whole list there of all packages. Yeah, here you can see this, or maybe not here. Yeah, whatever. All the packages are hard coded into this. I, I'm not sure why they did it like that, but whatever. I tried tried this. I tried all of it. I tried the uh, uh, the remix. I didn't like it. I tried. I downloaded uh, the daily build of Ubuntu. Updated it to Rolling Rhino with the script. I installed Debget. Played around with it a bit in a virtual box, uh, and um, I noticed I really liked it. Uh, apt the command line utility, the default Ubuntu Debian command line utility for updating packages and stuff is now really fast, much faster than I remembered. I think they have recently um, rebuilt the whole program. I'm not 100% sure about this. I think I read it somewhere that they have, uh, they made like migrated from Python to C++ for the apt, yeah, I guess both back and front end maybe. Uh, and it's it's really fast. It's 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 like Pac-Man fast. Uh, and together with this this dev get not having to worry about PPAs. Also the rolling it actually pulled in. I got the latest version of Bash was pulled in automatically with the rolling uh, devel packages and stuff like that. It felt it, it actually felt quite good. And I I think I like it more than SUSE to be honest. Um. And I even made a video here, you know, I made this build i3 from source video where I built i3 from source, the latest version, which I am using now here on SUSE. I made a video about that. I actually made a video on how to do it on Ubuntu as well, where I uh, download every package, and I, but I made that a secret unlisted video. So the only way to get to it now is from this link here. Uh, so this is unlisted. Yeah, these two views is myself <laughs> after clicking on that link uh, because this is take three. Uh, it's unlisted, so it's not available except if you click there, but then you can watch it and here you can see how I do it on Ubuntu. And it is in a way, that's the reason I made it unlisted. It's, it's more or less the exact same thing as, you, as we do on SUSE. I also added the list here, Ubuntu uh, packages. This is a one-liner to install all the needed dependencies. So if you follow this instead of watching this video, it will take like 10 minutes to do this, tops. Um, so I did that. Um, and that also worked fine. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
So that was one thing. It was Lanius' video there. That really triggered me a bit there. Yeah, I should maybe this is what I should should be doing. Um, then I also saw um, uh, this was just uh, the other day here. <laughs> this is a bit uh, on the, the i3 subreddit. Ella the Cat published this, Feeble Nerd, 7 years of helping users transition to i3. And then there is a link here to Feeble Nerd. I don't know why they also used the OC bracket here, but OC Feeble Nerd, 6 years helping users transition to i3. That's the link, and that is kind of the <laughs> last year's post made by Ella the Cat, where she links to uh, Feeble Nerd, which is a um, blogger i guess who have written some guides uh, one guide from 2015 here how to combine i3 with uh, uh, xfce but he writes here he, he made an update in april 2021 this is from 2015 so in 2021 he made an update no ppa necessary good um, and uh, this updated guide is actually better uh, because it doesn't use uh, XF session and stuff like that. It's very similar to what I do with the, uh, in my setup as well. And I, uh, of course, was inspired by his original uh, blog post there once upon a time. So that is kind of what, what made me uh, start messing around with this. Uh, and it does more or less the same thing, starting XFC panel just like you would with any other bar, basically. Uh, I, I think I will save this to, to a later video actually, but because I, I read this uh, article again, uh, just to see if I'm if to to see if I there are some things I do different. And one thing I find weird is that Feeble Nerd is actually promoting. Uh, 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 he is promoting LX appearance. No, I don't find it here. To change the theme and stuff like that. Yeah, here, LX appearance manages icons and widget themes. I actually don't recommend this at all, and especially not if you're doing this with this kind of indicates that they are doing it on Ubuntu, you know, the Ubuntu XFCE flavored uh, uh, release or distro. And that have uh, like the XFCE appearance utilities included and, and stuff like that. And I think I will do a separate video about this, why I think LX appearance why well, you shouldn't use it and use XFCE appearance instead. And in my opinion, it, it is true for for uh, uh, even non-XFCE uh, uh, setups as well. Here we can see he doesn't use uh, systemd, uh, just starts everything from the i3 config. But I just wanted to say this also, and just to be clear, this is very much not to bash on uh, Feeble Nerd. I think this is these are great articles, and they have probably really uh, made people want to try i3, and has been really good for for everyone here. But this doing this, there are problems starting XFC panel like this. I made a video uh, not that long ago about it actually. Um, see if we can find it in case you haven't seen that just quickly here uh, best look fix serious issue uh, in Thunar and XFCE panel it, it discusses how and uh, some problems that you might encounter if you don't start XFCE panel correctly and the correct way to start it is actually by using the XFCE session uh, manager program which I don't like to use uh, for different reasons, but at least then you don't get any issues here by, uh, when you start it like this. The other solution is to actually use systemd to start this or set it up in a quite complex uh, bash script uh, wrapper thing. Um, I will not get into it, but there is problems doing this uh, right now. Otherwise, I think this is an ex excellent guide. Uh, and the thing I like, the most is this beautiful uh, logo, which I think I will borrow and create a wallpaper for myself out of. Uh, because this is my next uh, uh, destination is um, XFCE Ubuntu i3 combination. Um, Sean Davis, he is the lead uh, lead of the Ubuntu project 
and he has a blog where he posts yeah, updates uh, about uh, the development of Ubuntu and now you can actually get the beta release which is yet another Ubuntu type release here so this is not a daily build this is a beta build which you can install also uh, but if you read these articles a bit carefully uh, especially the not this one was published uh, just a couple of days ago but he made one uh, on the 5th of September which has more information about the different uh, 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 versions of the programs and you will see that you will actually get like the latest XFCE 4.17 versions of the programs when you, when you install this uh, so with Ubuntu you actually get more recent uh, versions of the XFCE utilities than you get from Arch for example if you use the default repositories because they are still on the 4.16 versions and I will now show you quickly my favorite thing and the main reason why you want to use 4.17 of XFCE if you can because I have it here the virtual machine the Ubuntu XFCE virtual machine I will try not to say anything about the wallpaper which I don't like so much here but it really doesn't matter open here this is just a base installation of i3 here we haven't really done anything let's bring up some some uh, and it's a uh, it's a uh, the latest build of i3 of course uh, let's start xfce4 panel just like that whatever and we should also we also need to do this xf settings daemon needs to be running that will apply the themes and stuff like that then we open settings editor now i think i have this enabled here yes i do x settings so i kind of spoil everything here now but whatever dialogues use header yes this is actually set on to true by default but this is a new option that is available in xfce 4.17 before this you couldn't customize this and it is kind of a <laughs> major thing uh, when this is enabled by default then dialogues looks like this you see the client side decoration this stuff there is also some weird thing here when you have these uh, windows open and i think this might be an issue with i3 that it doesn't paint the i3 window decoration it used to do that even when you got got client side decoration i3 used to also paint uh, or draw the i3 decoration but here you can see i cannot drag this window that's because i have this this one open uh, we have the annoying client side decoration we don't get our beautiful i3 window decoration you used to get double uh, title bars when you had client side decorations you know on a window manager and I, i'm not sure which one i prefer if i would like this like this now when i uh, it, it's more obvious when it's tiled that you don't get a double title bar I'm not sure which one I prefer and now it's also not clear if the i3 yeah now you know I cannot use the right click to resize and stuff like that so I would actually prefer even if it's ugly to have double title bar but look at this now look at this beautiful beautiful feature sometimes backwards is progress and sometimes progress is backwards that's not good but when backwards is progress now I can see the full screen has borked out a bit here so I will just do this and that and th this and that there okay we messed it up completely did I go full screen here now uh, all right I fixed it mm, okay 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 I wanted god damn it it is floating right you see i don't even know if it's there no it's sorry 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 so the amazing feature it i know this is not the best demo to show an, an amazing feature settings editor 
I'm not the biggest fan of the UI and, and the settings editor in general, but setting this feature, I am a fan of. You disable dialog use header. Then you close this. And now when we open about, no client side decoration, normal window looks like it should. Open panel preferences, normal window, no client side decoration, look just as it should. We get the i3. And this is now a default setting for XFCE that's available. So you can disable that and get like normal windows and it makes a big difference, especially when you are using a tiling window manager like this. So you get like correct uh, uh, decoration. Um, this is why you want to use 4.17. It's not available in the versions you get from the official repositories on Arch, for example. You need uh, yeah, one of the 4.17. I think it's XFCE UI Lib. It's like one of these uh, core uh, uh, libraries that provides this functionality. So it's not like bound to uh, XFCE panel. That is also why it's so great, because it this applies to like Thunar and everything. So if we open Thunar, for example, if some of these yeah, you have about boxes here and other windows also uses that uh, client side decoration. To me, it makes a big difference. And this is what I was uh, talking about. Um, there's, I did it. I, I, I wanted to resize the window, left clicked, and it started tile dragging. I need to do this for some reason. <laughs> Uh, that is actually what I was talking about in, in an earlier video when I explained that I this is something I really want. I want the latest versions of XFCE. What I really wanted was this, to get rid of that extra title bar. I, I, I don't understand uh, why that have to be a thing. And now the XFCE developers, and they are, this is what they have, why they have done this. They, have, they realized that it was a bad idea to introduce the, the client side decoration and that it was probably a mistake. I wouldn't be surprised if this will be the default option in uh, 4.18. Right now it is, as you could see there, you have to disable it uh, for, for, to get the, the old or the, the normal <laughs> windows. But I wouldn't be surprised if it will be the default to have this normal window without client side decoration. If you're a fan of that, use GNOME instead, I, I believe, and they do it as well as you can do that uh, thing. And some people like that a lot. And then you have that desktop environment and we who don't like it at all, we have this desktop environment, right? That's great, that's great. We do, it's better if we are different than if we are the same because then everyone can be happy instead of everyone being sad. That's at least how I view things, but I don't know about you. Um, all right, I think that's uh, that's all. That's all. How long did we go on? One hour. Perfect. Have a great day, everybody. See you in the next video. I will probably not be using SUSE at all uh, then, but thank you for watching and thank you, SUSE. Great distribution, but not for me. Okay, bye.